The Department of Forensic Science at West Virginia University is one of the leading forensic science programs uh, based on the accomplishments and achievements through research and teaching of students. So one of our philosophies at uh, the Forensics Department is, is we focus on making scientists out of students before we make them forensic scientists. And a good foundation of science will lead to a good forensic scientist. Innovations in forensic science are crucial for advancing the administration of justice, homeland security, and public safety. Developments in spectroscopy, laser-based technology, mass spectrometry, and computer science are examples of tools that we use in our research group to enhance law enforcement and forensic laboratories' capabilities. Trace materials, often invisible to the naked eye, are essential to answer relevant questions to the investigation like how and when the materials were transferred, where the sample came from, and what may have occurred during the crime. My research team develops novel methods for identifying, analyzing, and providing interpretation of trace evidence. There are investigations where there's not a transfer of biological material, and so it can be the trace evidence that connects the crime and the perpetrator. And so it's very important that all types of evidence are analyzed because they do complement each other in the investigation. The equipment that we apply is state of the art to make sure that the students are competitive when they go out into the field. Through the Department of Commerce, we purchase the instrument we are using for a faster way of imaging fingerprints that we developed from evidence and that will enable us to assist our local or national crime scene units in newer techniques in development and processing and imaging. A recent NIJ-funded collaboration between Michigan State Police Forensic Laboratory, NIS, Patel, and other 10 forensic laboratories has helped to establish scientific validity in the field, develop methods that quantify the quality of a fit, and use this criteria to substantiate the adoption of modern XRF technology and interpretation methods for this type of evidence. Past research has shown that micro XRF is an excellent tool for discriminating between different sources of glass. One of the key aspects of this study is being able to analyze very small fragments down to 200 microns in diameter, 50 microns in thickness. We perform a mock case to illustrate the use of physical feet examinations. In this case, duct tape was removed from the victim and was found to fit like a puzzle with the fracture end of a tape roll found on the suspect backpack. We can see that the match establishes a strong link between these items. Until now, this type of evidence, known as physical feed, is considered to have the highest probative value and is very easy to demonstrate to a jury. However, it could be challenged in court as the error rates for these examinations have not been yet widely evaluated. In collaboration with Dr. Aldo Romero's group at WBU and Dr. Cedric Newman at Battelle, has narrowed down this gap by developing one of the largest physical and digital databases ever created in physical fit examinations of materials like tape, textiles, and automobile plastics. Therefore, what we do is that we take an image of the first tape, an image of the second tape, and we use an image processor, which at the end of the day is a neural network, which is the AI that we use, and it will collapse the information of one image, which collapse the second information of one image in a vector, and the two vectors will be comparable to each other. And based on the statistical analysis, we'll say that the two sources will come from the same source. With over 300,000 shooting incidents a year, Gun violence affects the U.S. society like no other country in the world. The increased occurrence of environmentally friendly ammunition in casework requires modifications to current technologies. So gunshot residue analysis currently lives in the proverbial gray area. Reliable screening test options are currently lacking. Laboratory instrumentation is often more expensive and not portable. And current analytical methodologies, which are very time consuming, only looks at the inorganic profile of gunshot residue. We came up with what we call the powerful duo for GSR screening. We envisioned the combination of two powerful methods, laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, or LIPS in short, and electrochemistry sensors. We partnered with these engineers for developing unique visualization tools using laser scattering videos and analytical sensors to understand the movement and dynamics of GSR around the firing site. So one highlight I'd like to point out is actually visualizing this very three-dimensional, very turbulent 
plume of gunshot residue. It's actually very striking and quite beautiful. This work is really helping us understand how this gunshot residue material is transported in the air. This could lead to a much better understanding of the exposure risks and also could ultimately lead to better recommendations on how to do field sampling. We have worked with industry partners such as Apply Spectra and Metrom to develop applications for laboratory and mobile systems that can revolutionize the field. The screening tools we develop is impressive, with typical accuracy better than 95%, even for databases that represent more challenging scenarios. The results are obtained within minutes, providing unprecedented response times. We strive to develop technology that can lead to more cost-effective and faster solutions while increasing the objectivity, reliability, and usage of the data. Remarkably, the methods are simple, cheap, and easy to adopt. We don't want limited resources to be the reason for not bringing justice to our citizens when trace evidence can. The new methods developed at West Virginia University could offer investigators with higher quality, real-time data out in the field. It could provide more discriminating power to gunshot residue analysis through the identification of both organic and inorganic components and possibly reduce gunshot residue case backlog by improving turnaround times. We listened carefully to the needs reported by our end users, developed ideas to provide solutions, and established multidisciplinary network of collaborators that can bring different talents and perspectives to transform those ideas to adoption in the field. This is what I call teamwork, dream work. Our groundbreaking research is led at WVU, but it extends beyond WVU to those who have trusted us and have made this possible. Trace evidence is more relevant and necessary than ever. We just need to adapt management approaches to continue making it available as an inherent right of individuals and their families to justice that upholds to the highest quality of science.